research. Jesus, man. That's fucking impressive. That's homework. Yeah. You got the best fucking interviews, man. What up, y'all? J. Cole, Cold World. We back at it again. Hard Knock TV. You already know. First question. Do you remember your first hip-hop memory? My first hip-hop memory? Yeah. First, like, rap music memory was Cool Mo D. First, and I don't remember nothing. I remember he had, like, Wild Wild West or whatever, like, whatever his other big song was. But I just remember being a big fan of Cool Mo D. I had Cool Mo D poster. So right away, before the music, I guess the image was important. I guess I noticed that. Because I didn't know much about him, but I knew he was cool. cool. Yeah. He was cool. <laughs> he used to call me Mange Mo D. Running around the house, Mange Mo D. Because everybody knew I liked cool Mo D. So that's so old school to even say. Like, uh, but yeah, yeah, it was all because he was cool. Do you, do you remember how you got introduced to him? Like, no, 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 it was no, just no. somehow the poster yeah, just showed somehow, up on the wall? Yeah, somehow. Somebody older, uncle or somebody like that. Probably, I don't know, man. I just remember that name, Cool Mo D. It's my first like rapper that I remember. Yeah. Do you remember at what point you decided, or what made you want to rap particularly? I remember I wrote a rap when Pac died. I was in sixth grade. I remember writing a rap. Like I felt compelled to write a rap. You know what I mean? That's like the first official rap I ever wrote. I feel like I was talking about him, almost like I had to carry the torch or something like in my mind, in my sixth grade mind. You know. That's, but then I took a break for like a year, not even a break. Like I just never ever rapped again for a year. I think what it was that made me want to rap was that when I actually tried it, it was I was good, and it was such an ill feeling to get that response and to affect people like that, to make people go, oh, like oh, ah, or like oh, you know, you battling somebody or like you in a cipher. We used to call each other on the phone to rap. Or even on the internet, I used to post post stuff, and just always that feedback. I just live for that, like, for that feedback. And once I started making songs, I just live for that feeling of like, yo, did I just make this? You know what I mean? I just this just came from me. I remember I made this song called "The Storm." It was literally like, yo, I thought I would never make a song that good again. I was not not that I thought I wouldn't. I was scared that I wouldn't. I was like, yo, am I ever gonna be able to top this? Kind of like the Eminem on that one a little yeah, bit. Well, yeah, of Definitely. course. It was Eminem and Nas. I just was, that's who I was listening to. So you can listen to that song and see like, man, that's what, that was the influence. My, you know, the high-pitched voice and all that. Yep, yep. Voice, voice, voice definitely has developed over time. Yeah, I used to sound like a fucking little girl, man. <laughs> uh, fast forward. Uh, actually, no, before we fast forward, I gave you power. <laughs> uh, rap was on my wall. You, uh, yeah. you tweeted. And uh, I, I love the line. I forget what uh, what songs that we talk about. How the lyrics were like pictures on on, on your uh, yeah, on like your wall. Gonna, yeah. Uh, t- tell me about that a little bit. Uh, yeah. So at this time, you had uh, Ola.com was like now you got lyric sites everywhere. You can go just type in. You got a million sites that got lyrics. But back then, it was like one site that you go to for all these rap lyrics. And uh, you know, I, I went through this phase where I literally. When I made the decision in my mind that I was going to be a rapper, I tore down all the basketball in my, my room. My brother loved Lowrider magazines, West Coast, Impalas, you know, like like rims, all that, drop tops. And his room was flooded with posters of girls in the Lowrider magazines, cars everywhere. And I was like, oh, I got to do this. Like, I got to deck my room out. So I did Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Penny Hardaway, basketball everywhere. And when I decided I wanted to rap, I remember it was a big day. It was a Saturday. I took the whole day and like meticulously ripped down all my basketball posters and pictures and then went and cut out all the pictures of the, of the rap magazines that I had. Source, Blaze, Double XL. Cut out the covers, the pictures, and hung them up. And then what I had on top of that, right next to my bed, literally, if I wake up and turn to the right, the wall that was right next to my bed was the lyrics. And I had like pages and pages and pages of lyrics. And to make my wall, you had to be, had to be amazing. You had to be Nas, Eminem, Cannabis. You had to be Royce to get a verse, Pac. You had to just, I, I, cause I used to sit, wake up, or even if I'm just in my room chilling and just read the verses. I already knew them word for word, but why, reading the words was special. Like reading them out. So it was like, I just, I don't know why I did it, but it, I was compelled to do that. Studying the craft. Word, for sure. Let's fast forward to uh, 
somewhere you talk about riding a Honda on your first tour. Yes. Uh, put me back in, in, in that state of mind. Like, what was that like? We had just got the deal February, and then like a couple months later, we had went to dinner, and Jay was out there. It was me, Mark Pitts, Jay, E was there. It was like Jay-Z, Jay Brown. Common was there randomly. You know, this is still a big deal for me. Like, I remember we had to go, like, take a shot to, like, calm our nerves because we was about to go eat with Jay-Z. I had just signed to him, but it was still a big deal to just even be in his presence. It still is a big deal. But, like, you know, then it was, like, nerve-wracking. So we went, sat with Jay. Rich Kleiman was there, all these Rock Nation heads, because you might got to remember, they were a brand-new company. They're so brand-new. So they was, you know, this is they're forming their company at the same time. So when I was sitting at dinner, it was like, oh, yo, um, we got this Wale, you know, we want to link you with Wale because Rich Kleiman was managing Wale um, and Jay was a part of that. So it's like, yo, we got this record with Wale, we want to put you on, blah, blah, blah. So like, for sure, I go do, go meet Wale, do Beautiful Bliss. Um, one of my favorite verses. Oh, my God. <laughs> Boy, that was one of my favorite verses, too. Um, and then and then Wale show love after that, he allowed me to, just open up for him on these shows because Chillin had just dropped. They were about to promo him, so he went on this promotional tour for Chillin. So like anything on the East Coast, we would go to. But you know, we not like on a bus. We don't have no, like, I just got a deal, but we ain't got no real money. You know what I mean? So just be me, Eve, or homeboy. We either take my car, drive up to Syracuse, or hop in my other homeboy car, drive down to Virginia, and I'm opening up. Nobody knows who I am, you know what I mean? I don't even know if I had to warm about and I would just come out. Um, there's a video on YouTube, you can look it up. It's, it's me in Norfolk, Virginia. We was just talking about this the other day. We in Norfolk, Virginia at the Norva. The dude announcing the show is like, mind you, this is a Wale and UCB tour. We're in Virginia. They're on fire in Virginia. Like this is their, it's DMV, this is what they do. So the dude announcing the show is like, ladies and gentlemen, are y'all ready for Wale? Are y'all ready for UCB? Yeah! Okay. But first, give it up for Jay Scott. I'm on the side of the stage like, what the fuck? Who the fuck is Jay Scott? Niggas in the crowd are like, who the fuck? So the nigga, he didn't even know who I was, which is not his fault. It just shows you where I was at at that time. I just come out. Like, yo, first of all, my name ain't Jay Scott, J. Cole. And I think I used to start the shows with an acapella. I'll, I'll be telling artists that like starting out, like, yo, when you come out, nobody knows you. Don't expect them to know you. Don't do your show like they know you. Like, come on, y'all, put your fucking hands up. Why am I gonna put my hands up? I don't even know who you are. So I used to come out like, I know y'all don't know me. I didn't say shit. I used to just rap right there, do an acapella. My best acapella, my best 16, do it. Do you remember what it was? Ah, I don't remember what it was. I don't remember what it was. It was probably on video. But just the mind state of like, I gotta grab y'all attention because while they allowing me to be out here, I'm gonna try to leave with as many fans as I can. You know what I mean? So that when I come back, y'all come see me or when I drop the warm up, y'all check it out. So that was the mind state of opening up for Wale on those promo tours. Let's fast forward. I'm curious, uh, the, the first line in Borden Center is, uh, it's way darker this time. Yeah. Uh, can you walk us through how the sophomore album came to be that way. Sophomore album was just patches of zones, of just great zones. You know what I mean? Like, I hit these zones, I started after the first album dropped. That's all it was, pockets of really good zones that produce a bunch of songs. People don't know I really just dropped two albums on you this year. If you combine all truly yours, one, two, and three, and then with my album, and then you go back to the I'm a Fool's, you know what I mean? Uh, whatever songs that I just leaked, like I really, and I still got more stash that we haven't put out or whatever. Like all that is a culmination of pockets of zones that I hit just creatively and just being in a good space, um, period. So that's, that's what the album is. In terms of it being dark, there was some real dark shit that I, that I made in the process. Some of it didn't even, ain't even on it. There's one song, I was like, am I ever gonna put this out? It's mad dark, it's like, it's, you know, almost too dark. But some, sometimes it was dark, sometimes it was Chris Tucker, because that's just how I was feeling on that day. But the point is, I was just free, just free to just 
get shit off my chest, let Nas down, or or like analyze it, or play with flows, but really say some shit like rich niggas. You know what I mean? Or, or I don't know, just pockets his own. So some of them was dark, and when it was time to finalize the album, I noticed there's 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 dark and there's like there's such a contrast, and that's why I shaped the album like that, and that's why it starts off dark. What does writing out of darkness mean to you? What could have happened to me? What I could have became, I think, as an artist. My, what my story could have been had I let like pressure get to me and like really defeat me. Had I become like, had I just said fuck it, I'm gonna just be this type of artist. Or had I just took a different path. Um, I think the only reason that didn't happen is because I was able to get that shit out of me by writing. You know what I mean? A song like Let Nas Down is like, whew, it's like weight off your chest. You ever told like a secret to somebody, and you're like, whew, I'm glad I told. Like, whew, that's what Born Center felt like for me. It felt like that. And last day I listened to the album, I literally, I finished the album, I listened to it straight through. We were just about to go to master it. I'm literally sitting in the studio by myself. I had been in the studio seven straight days, no shower, <laughs> no bullshit, like literally straight. Wouldn't leave it. I didn't even see the outside until I was done with the album. And everybody, I remember everybody was sleeping in the uh, in the lounge. Some people were sleeping in the recorder booth. It's like six, seven a.m., maybe even eight a.m. I'm in the studio listening to the album, and I could not believe. Like it's almost like I'm hearing it for a fan, like a fan for the first time. Oh, as soon as Born Center came on the last song, I started crying, grateful tears, and also unbelievable tears. Like damn, I really, I really did it. Like I beat the shit. Like. I beat y'all niggas. You know what I mean? Like I could have, I, I could have been crushed. I could have been broken. I could have lost the shit I had to go through. You know what I mean? Just and it's not nobody's fault. It's just the way the game was set up. It wasn't set up for for me to survive in my pure state. You know what I mean? It wasn't. I'm not supposed to still be here dropping crooked smile and having that be a smash. You know what I mean? I had to come infiltrate, play the game, boom beat the game, come back. Now I'm to a place where I'm like, Phew. now it's easy for niggas. As long as you come with good music, you can beat Kendrick Lamar. You don't gotta put out your song with Lady Gaga, whatever it is. You could be Joey Badass and you ain't, a, a label not gonna tell you, hey, but you need a single. No, man, just develop your fan base and, and put out a great album. You know what I mean? I ain't had a luxury, so I could have been crushed. They didn't, they tried to crush Wale. They almost crushed that nigga. You know what I mean? Like. The, I was, literally watched the system almost crush him. Thank God he bounced back. Thank God he got hits in the career right now. And thank God he's killing. Because the system tried to crush him. It ain't one person. It ain't Jimmy Iovine. It ain't Mark Ronson. It ain't Jay-Z. It's the system that was telling artistic young niggas that you got to do it this way. Right. They almost, they could have got me. Born Center is like, oh, that's me. Like, y'all could have got me. And I'm telling. So I'm listening to that album at the end like, shh unbelievable like people don't know they don't know how I feel but I really felt like I made it through like I'm here I, I made it I made it out right that's right in through darkness I wrote all that shit out talk about the the duality the, the horn the halo the motif is prevalent throughout the album and, and to a larger extent your career is that a daily struggle that balance of the the horn the halo I think it's a daily struggle for everybody I hate to do that but, but if I was to really tell her, I'd be getting too personal and be like, yeah, it's a daily struggle. And I don't feel like, I don't feel the need to go that personal and tell you my vices and shit. But yes, I think it's a daily struggle for everybody. Everybody got vices. Sometimes it's just a cigarette. Some people can't stop cigarettes. Some people can't stop smoking crack. You know what I mean? They know. They know that this shit is fucking me up. But the feeling, the sensation, of smoking crack is so amazing to them. And they hook to that feeling, they can't let it go. Some people are so dependent on sex, they can't give it up. Some, and so everybody, alcohol, everybody got something. You know what I mean? I don't care to dive into my shit, but right. well, I feel like it's a fight for everybody. Well, I feel like the, the, the hook for Miss America kind of represents that, 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 that kind of Tupac duality. He heavy heart, as I said, in my ranch, counting thousands out. Am I about the dollar or am I about change? Am yeah. I about knowledge or am I about brains? 
Freedom or big chains. Yes. They don't feel my pain. Yes. And I got to go through that thing. Uh, I get those thoughts because they're real thoughts. Like, I'm literally, I got both in me. You know what I mean? For, for whatever reason, I feel like because I'm, maybe everybody got both in them. I don't know. But I know that I do love my chain. And I love this watch. And I love the feeling of getting one. But I do know that that's probably not the smartest thing to do with my money. And I do have guilt about buying it, knowing what I could get for this. I do have guilt having money, period, knowing that I used to despise people with money. Like me and my brother we used to be like, oh, they rich. They rich. Like we go to school with kids. Oh, he rich. He drive a Benz. His father bought him a Benz. What? I used to hate like, and now, my son is gonna have a Benz. Mom got a Benz, like, so there's a guilt that comes with that, too. So I like, I'm not one of those rappers that's like, or one of those people, because they ain't just rappers, they just a reflection of people. Like, I got money, I'm getting money. Nah, I don't, you never, you know, that's not my, that's not my character, you know what I mean? So I gotta deal with that, I gotta live with that. On uh, Illuminati, you say, did a deal with the devil, now I'm pleading with him, like giving my soul. What does that represent to you? This represents, the game, the industry, you know what I mean? Of course, I didn't literally sign my deal, with it, sign my soul over to the devil. This is no Illuminati shit. It's a metaphor for, man, it's a metaphor for what you have to give up or what they try to make you give up when you get in this game. Just as a commercial artist and have the aspirations that you have, like it's, it could be easy to fold and succumb so when I say that line, it's really like somebody that, imagine imagine doing a deal with the devil and then being like, oh, wait, but no, ah, it's not what I wanted. And he's fucked. That was the, uh, that was the approach I was trying to take. Uh, the track for uh, Land of the Snakes, the way that it ends, it, all, it almost makes me feel like you're including yourself as a snake. Oh, yeah, but, but the I, la whole last verse. The whole last verse. Yes, yeah, the whole yeah. last verse, I'm the, yeah. I'm the snake that I, that I was supposed to be watching out for. And ironically, I'm meeting that girl in LA. That whole song is just about being in LA, the place where you can absolutely, I've seen people go to LA, lose themselves. I love LA. And when I talk about LA, I ain't talking about Inglewood. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about Hollywood. Cause when you a celebrity and you go to LA, you're not going to Watts, you know what I mean? You're going to, you're going to Hollywood. So I say that song, that song is about my love for LA, but how dangerous I see it is. Cause I seen, people, rappers, whoever go there and just literally, they not the same person no more. They believe it. They start to believe I'm this character. You lose touch of reality. So the song is a warning for that. But then on the third verse, I meet this girl in LA who reminds me that, yo, I'm no better. Like I, I'm the snake to her. I did her dirty. You know what I mean? Like, and it's uh, some people that might seem like a trivial thing. Like, oh man, but to her, that's real. Like, yo, I fucked you and you never, you never called me. You know what I mean? And I never forgot. That was 10 years ago and I still didn't forget. But never saying that, but I know you're thinking that. So that I'm the snake to her. I'm the shitty dude. Meanwhile, I'm walking around nervous about everybody else being, you know, being shitty or being fake or being whatever. It's good duality to, to be able to see both perspectives, I feel like. No doubt. That's what I appreciate as an MC. Okay, you tweeted uh, Kanye West is one of the greatest artists of our generation. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, uh, did you see the, the BBC interview? I didn't. I didn't see the interview, but everybody that was on this tour bus kept talking about it. So he called himself a god, which it's kind of crazy how people blew up, but I thought his point was very interesting. He's like, okay, I can call myself a god. He didn't call himself god, he called himself a god. but. If I call myself a drug dealer or a pimp or whatever, people don't seem to trip about yes. that. But if you said a god, then all of a sudden it's like that's, you know, yes. a huge problem. I think there's no rules. You can say what you want. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you can say what you want, whether you want to press people's buttons or whether that's how you really feel. That's your poetic license, right. is to test people's boundaries. That's the only way we still know we have boundaries. If nobody says something that, that makes us go, wait a minute, I'm not fucking with that. Not fucking with him bringing Jesus on stage. <laughs> well, shit, you didn't know you had a boundary until he did it. Right. You know what I mean? So as an artist, he's, yeah, I respect him for, for pressing that button right. 
and making you react a certain way. You know what I mean? Can you walk me through the inspiration behind the track, uh, Rich? And uh, there seems to be some confusion on the hook. You say, <laughs> how much for your soul, Anna? Or how much for your soul, uh-huh? <laughs> Can, can, can you can you break down yeah. the inspiration behind that and what the actual meaning uh, of the hook is? Rich Nick is one of the last songs I did for the album right before um, I hit a zone. I did Voluminati. Rich Niggas. Then I needed a song because the sample didn't get cleared, so I did uh, Forbidden Fruit. I think that was the order. And, and Rich Niggas, my homeboy said I found a sample. I cooked up the beat real quick. It's just it's a bounce with a kick and a snare. Real simple, 808. And I was feeling good. It was late night, start writing. I understand that when I start writing, I don't always know where it's headed. Maybe until, you know, midway through the first verse or something. So the first thing I write is, I hate rich niggas. God damn it. I ain't never had a lot, damn it. And it's perfect that that came out because the, the thought that's been in my head or was in my head at the time was like, yo, just like I told you earlier, I used to have such a problem with like, with people with money. It was almost a bitterness and a jealousy because my mom got to work so hard. You know what I mean? And in my eyes, your father's rich, your mom don't even got to work. You drive a Benz. You know, it was like a real feeling for me, which is kind of weird because there's people, there's people that I used to live around. But now that we move into a better neighborhood, I'm like, they looking at me like, yo nigga, y'all got two cars. And you got your own bedroom now, you know? So to them, I'm like, they looking at me like I'm rich. And I'm looking at these people like, man, rich, blah, blah, blah. Cause the school I went to is like, it's half black, half white. And, and some of the, you know, some of the white kids, they got money. Not on some private school, LA shit, but for Fayetteville, like they got money, whatever. So I start to track like that. But it's ironic because now I have money. I'm, I'm at that level now, you know what I mean? I'm one of them. My kids are gonna be one of them. So it's that battle. The whole song though, I just took that approach of, of ironies. Half cracker with a nigga too. Like, you know, it was a time when my mom was uh, delivering pieces for just extra income. So she had to deliver mail, come back home, change her clothes and go deliver pieces. And I used to be so scared because she was delivering, deliver, she used to deliver mail in the hood, it's fine. You delivering pieces in the projects at night. I know how niggas do. I know the, you know, I know the game. They gonna set you up. They gonna rob, you know, robbing pizza delivery people was the most easy come up. So I'm scared about that. I know how niggas do. I know I'm half white. I know, but I'm black too. It's that whole thing. It's people that's questioning like, oh, can he even say nigga? He's half white. It's it's my stepdad. You know what I mean? It's like I, he's such a dog. I'm growing up, fuck, such a dog. What am I now? You know what I mean? Like, what am I? Who am I? Second verse. I'm talking to this rapper. Like, damn, your flows is ill, but all you ever talk, like, the only thing you offer to the world is talking about how much money you have. I know you're supposed to write your life, but damn, you ain't got nothing else to talk about. I see through you. Oh, shit. Am I speaking to, am I becoming you? Like, you know what I mean? That's the fear. So I'm talking shit to him, but meanwhile saying like, damn, questioning myself. Spend a hundred thousand for the chain again. Think of old school niggas like Dana Dane, probably kill for another claim to fame. My brain is saying, yeah, nigga, at least he ain't insane. I went and watched a Dana Dane video just because I wanted to see where a nigga like that was at right now. There's some video on YouTube of him driving around in a cab, freestyling. It's like some dude interviewing him in a cab or something in the backseat of a car. He's nice. He's still nice. You know what I mean? Uh, he, would he, what would he do to be in my situation right now? I'm not sure. I'm just thinking out loud. So that song is just a bunch of like contrasting thoughts, you know, with a with crazy flow. I love doing that at the shows. And these people make me so happy. They know that shit word for word. I can't believe it. I feel like I, I've been to two shows in a week. I feel like that's one of the songs that has the biggest response, mm -hmm. which which surprised me a little bit because listening to the album, like it's one of my favorite songs, but I didn't know you why expect people, yo, that was going to be crazy. one of the songs that people were crazy word. That shit is hard to rap. Girls being, a, I mean, not that girls don't know my shit anyways, but they just, blah, 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 every line. It's crazy. How do you fight the temptation to dumb down? 
temptation to dumb down. Oh, I'm past that. You go through it though, because you, I, when you're a student of the game and you study what works, you see what works. And, and when we say dumb down, I don't mean become dumb. Dumb down is just actually being smart. It's being smart. And I'll, tell you, I'll give you an example. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Ho. H to the O V. I use the move Snowflakes by the O Z. Uh, Kanye West. Uh, uh, and what I do, act more stupidly. Pop more. Oh, no, no, no. I ain't one of the Cosby's. I ain't go to hell, man. Like, he's writing lines that he knows are so simple for you. He's not trying to go over your head. He's putting it on a platter for you. He's setting you up. Jay-Z is the same dude that used to rap like this. But Reasonable Doubt was the most intricate shit. But he learned, man, let me feed it to the people better. You know what I mean? He said, I dumbed down, dumbed down for my audience, tripled my dollars. They criticized me for it, yet they all y'all holler. Well, he, him dumbing down was actually, it was done in a smart way. He's not dumbing down trying to sound like the dumb rapper. He just putting it on a platter for you. Now, I had to fight that once I saw that. It was like, what's the, what's the, what's the balance? What's the fix? And I think you just, you just become a better songwriter. That's it. That's the fix. So you're not, I don't, I don't, it's hard to explain because dumbing down is, a, is such a harsh term. I wouldn't know how to dumb it down. Dumbing it down wouldn't be possible for me. But I can't write smarter and put it for people in a way that, you know what I mean? When you're a student of the game, you know how to do that. I can point to any rapper and show you the shit they do. Girl, I know you won't. It's eh, smart, genius, genius. But that's not da 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 da. You know what I mean? Right. Do you feel that with this album, because of the duality of a lot of his meanings, like a song like Power Trip, for example, which you would you you've, you said that it's a continuation of dreams, right? Which somebody might listen to it and it's like, okay, it's a relationship song. But to you, or for what I've seen, it also has another meaning. Of course, yeah. Is that part of the, the, the being smarter and the, the having different layers and then people that maybe get just, a... That satisfies me. I don't care if nobody ever found out that Power Trip had a double meaning or that Lights Please is a double meaning or that I don't care. I do that shit for me. There's another, I got another song coming out where I'm featured on somebody's, on this, on this girl's record and the whole verse is a double meaning. The whole concept, I don't care if nobody ever gets it. It would be cool if they did, but at the end of the day, I'm just satisfied that I know what I put in there and I know the connection. So a song like Power Trip is like, it's just an amazing song, period. It's cool that I know that it really stands for this. You know what I mean? There's a theory that, uh, I don't know if they're gonna kill me for this and like assassinate me and shit, but there's a, there's a theory, there's a theory on The Shining, Stanley Kubrick. It's really like, you gotta look up the theory about that movie and what like, what the devil meaning is. He didn't come out and say, look, y'all, it's the devil meaning. And you gotta look up what the, what the, the theory is. But he didn't come out and tell you. He was just satisfied knowing like, yo, I accomplished what I was trying to say in a sneaky way. So all the devil meaning shit, sometimes it's just for me. I don't care. If, it was the UCLA show, matter of fact, the first time somebody, the same show you interviewed me at was the first time somebody ever came up to me. It was like, yo, J. Cole. He was like, yo, I'm a big fan. Yo, I gotta ask you something. Is Lights Please really a double meaning? And like, the girl is really hip hop and you're trying to like blah, blah, blah. Yo, when he told me that shit, I freaked out. Like, it was almost like, yo, like you're not even supposed to get that or look that deep, you know what I mean? But I appreciated it but I didn't make it for that. I just made it for it to be a, a dope ass song. If nobody gets it, it's cool. Any chance you want to tell us what the dope meaning of, of Power Trip is? A Power Trip? Nah, it's just whatever you assume. It ain't that hard. Like a lot of my relationship songs, I'm either talking to like, the girl is a fan. I'm really talking to the fans when I'm talking to the girl, like Premeditated Murder. I'm talking to the fans. Or I'm talking about the game, it's, you know what I mean? Like listen to Premeditated Murder. When I'm talking to my girl, I'm talking to my girl, but I'm also talking to the fans. And then that'll give you an idea.